Uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're going to call the uh, meeting of the Scarborough Town Council back to session. Uh, just for the public, we have already actually opened up the meeting and went into executive session um, to talk about a contract zone negotiations. And um, so uh, we are back. Um, so with that, I'm moving on to item number four on the agenda for general public comments. If anybody would like to get up and speak, you may do so for three minutes on any item that is not on the agenda. Good evening. My name is Jean Marie Caterina, 311 Gorham Road. Um, seems really funny to be on this side of this, but that's okay. Uh, I just wanted to speak. I know it's on the agenda as, res as a resolution, but to um, put out there that I hope that all of you support the resolution uh, to follow through with that Gorham East West Corridor. Uh, I have lived on 114 since uh, 1988, and I have seen the traffic problems increase year after year after year. In fact, I was involved with PACs back in the early 19, 19, yeah, like time, 1990s uh, on, on this particular issue, and I was very pleased to see that finally, hopefully, um, we will get uh, some funding perhaps from Maine Turnpike Authority and take off the traffic off from roads that were never built or never um, crafted in such a way to handle the, uh, the amount of traffic uh, that goes by. Just as an, ex <coughs> excuse me, as an example, it takes me five minutes sometimes to even get out of my driveway if it's certain points of the day. Uh, and I know from my husband having been formerly captain at Engine 5, for him to get from my house up to Engine 5 to go on call uh, at, in the evenings or um, heading you know, in that direction towards Gorham, it, it was dangerous. Uh, so, anyway, so I would appreciate any support you guys give to that. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, Marge DeSantis, 54 Beechridge Road. I'm the chair of the Scarborough Housing Alliance, and at our February meeting, um, the Scarborough Housing Alliance came up with a, um, I don't know, we'll call it guidance statement for the council on how we feel about certain uh, affordable housing units. And then when I'm done reading this, I'll, I'll give it to Tody so you can have it for the record. The committee's strong preference is to locate affordable housing units integrated into the development project. We believe a minimum of 10% would be appropriate given the proximity of the crossroads zone, which has an inclusionary zoning requirement of 10%. However, should the council choose to accept the in-lieu fee, the committee believes that the funds could be used to partner with an affordable housing developer and produce other affordable housing, which obviously is our goal. So that was our statement. Thank you. Any other comments? <laughs> Not seeing any, we'll close the general public comments. Moving on to item number five, minutes from February 15th, 2017th, regular meeting. Is there a motion on the floor? Uh -huh. Approval. Second. And a second, thank you. Any corrections that is for the clerk? Not seeing any, all in favor? And it's unanimous, thank you. Adjustments to the agenda. Um, I, will, I do have one adjustment to the agenda. We will move or continue order number 17-018, act on the request for an executive session um, pursuant to Title I MRSA 405.6C regarding economic development relating to the Eighth Amendment to the contract zone number nine by the residents at Gateway Commons. It was the subject of our first executive session and we'll be continuing that um, following council member comments. Um, we will actually come back to session only for the purposes of adjournment after the conclusion of that meeting. Uh, moving on, items to be signed. I'll sign the treasurer's warrants as we go through the agenda. Resolution 17-001, act on a resolution 17-001 to follow through with the transportation and land use action plan for the Gorham East-West Corridor and authorize the town manager to sign the resolve. Um, I'd like to, before public comment, I'd like to turn it over to the manager for an explanation. Certainly. Uh, this is the subject of a workshop at your last council meeting two weeks ago. Members, uh, representatives from the Maine Turnpike Authority uh, had the occasion to sit with you and provide some of the history. This project, uh, as was mentioned from the podium, has been in the works for many, many years. And uh, at this point, they're looking to kind of breathe some new life back into the project. And the Maine Turn Turnpike Authority has expressed a willingness to uh, take a leadership position uh, in this regard. Uh, until recently, uh, Maine uh, DOT was uh, kind of a partner in terms of who would take the lead. Um, 
so much so this legislative session, uh, there was a bill that will provide further mandate to the MTA so they could actually uh, have some confidence that they could um, explore this and, and ultimately build it. What's before you this evening is a resolution that really uh, provides support to that effort and should it be successful this evening, I suspect I will attend uh, one of the hearings in Augusta when the bill comes up and offer this uh, resolution and maybe some comments um, in support of, of the bill. Uh, four other communities, those being South Portland, Gorham, Westbrook, and Scarborough are asked to sign this. Uh, we've been identified as the four communities that stand to benefit the most or uh, we could also say impacted the most right now with the current conditions. Um, including uh, the Portland Area Comprehensive uh, Transportation System, PACS, is also a, a very strong partner agency in this effort. So again, this just is a sentiment of support for this next step of the process. Uh, with that, I'd like to open up a public comment. Anybody that would like to get up and speak on the item? Going once, twice, not seeing any, uh, close public comment. And uh, what is the will of the council? So moved. Sorry. Discussion. Any comments? Councilor Donovan. Yeah, I strongly support this. This could be the most important transportation initiative that's undertaken in the years to come. That section of Scarborough is tremendously impacted. As anybody who's driven Gore Road knows, or 22 uh, Congress Street. So uh, this, this is vitally important. It's the MTA is offering a financing mechanism to get this done. And that is always the problem when you're talking about uh, a large-scale solution and a large-scale project. Great. Other comments, Councillor Chiazzo? So as the uh, liaison to the PACS group, um, this has been discussed um, quite heavily with that group as well. Uh, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's a, certainly a regional opportunity. Um, bear in mind this is a process that could take five to ten years. So this is the super really, really preliminary basically just authorization saying we're conceptually we think it's good to start exploring it, but um, this is a long way off and this is a step one of, of probably dozens or, or more steps that will need uh, continued council approval. So this isn't a, a quick one stop and done type of thing. It's just very preliminary begins the process for sure. Uh, to Sinclair. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I can't imagine not supporting this. Um, it's desperately needed and um, it's going to help provide a, a solution to so many problems down there. Um, and so I'm in complete favor of this. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, comment about the uh, presentation we got at the workshop. I thought it was very informative. Um, um, and I also used to uh, tell my dog off a canteen on uh, County Road, which is wonderful. Um, but it meant that I was driving at rush hour in absolutely the wrong direction um, through that area, and it's, it's brutal. I mean, this is, um, this is needed, uh, and I think that if there are uh, individuals that are going to be highly impacted negatively, but I think overall, um, it's pretty important issue that we need to move forward, and I think this resolution is really going to be helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, I would, I fully support it and agree. I mean, I've had, we have clients who, when they want to start looking in Scarborough, they'll draw a map and say, don't, I don't. I won't. Don't even show me a house over there because of the traffic. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, it's needed. It's bad. Thank you. Um, again, also in support. Uh, I don't remember the date for some reason, but when we did have that workshop, I would recommend anybody to go online and take a look at that workshop because the presentation <laughs> by Peter Mills and the MTA was absolutely. Uh, wonderful and astounding, and you get to see in generalities on what we're really discussing, and that is a new corridor, a new pathway between really the, um, the South Portland Main Mall exit through the one, uh, Running Hill Road 114 out to Gorham. The number one slide in that isn't really where it's going, but really um, the traffic congestion, the, the quality of traffic control and the intersections which are primarily failing at this time, and this solution brings them up to, very few move to a, an A rating, it's an A through F, um, but most of them are, will be at least at a C rating, which is pretty significant. Um, and so this is a great, this is a regional solution, to, uh, or a state solution to a regional problem that cannot be funded locally. Um, so I think that this is something that we need to support, and it's nice to hear. I, I'm pretty certain that the other communities have supported and signed on, so I appreciate that this looks like it probably will be unanimous. 
Um, so um, with that, I would move the question and all in favor. And that is unanimous. Thank you. Um, order number 17-014, it's a 7 o'clock public hearing and possible second reading of proposed amendments, Chapter 601, the Town of Scarborough Traffic Ordinance, Section 25, Parking Restrictions, Subsection A.4, um, Roman numeral 4-1, Pine Point. Um, I would like to, uh, before public comments, turn it over to uh, Council Donovan as Chair of the Ordinance for an overview. Uh, this is a, a project that uh, runs from Snow Canyon Road to East Grand Avenue. Uh, it has uh, uh, parking on the south side of the street. It was reviewed carefully by the town engineer, Angela Blanchett, with the Ordinance Committee and it was unanimously endorsed by uh, the Ordinance Committee for adoption. Excellent, thank you. Um, and with that, I'd, uh, before turning it over to the manager, I would actually like to open up for public comment. Would anybody like to speak about the ordinance? Go ahead. I would. <laughs> Hi, good evening. My name's Mo Erickson. I don't want the parking. I think you know that already. But I feel like, oh, I feel like in this town, nobody ever listens to me. I wish, I wish you guys would. Trust me, it's a mistake. It's a plain and simple mistake. And I feel like just because you have this little uh, windfall of money or from the DOT is going to come and help, you know, beautify this area, just because you have it doesn't mean it's right. Doesn't mean you should spend it on this. I really feel like this is a huge mistake. There should be no parking on the Pine Point Road. Parking only started there three years ago. Up until that <coughs> point, nobody ever, ever, ever parked there, unless it was for my wedding at St. Jude's because of the <laughs> incredible overflow, but nobody ever parked there. And they did fine. And, and there was never an issue. There was still plenty of parking spaces at the beach. I just, I, I really feel like because the town has this little bit of money or it's kind of like the tooth fairy came down and hey we can do this and beautify this area that you're just being blinded by the practicality of it all and you should not do it. I know that a couple of weeks ago somebody mentioned how now that the new bridge is there at when you're going from the very start of that new bridge down it looks like uh, almost gives or you're coming up towards the new bridge from the Klimbeck you get this sort of highway feel and as I was running today at 5 o'clock in the dark across that bridge I thought well sure you have this highway feel because there's no sidewalk on the bridge so then I thought what a perfect solution take this money that you're allocating for all this beautification of nowhere land and make parking spaces put a sidewalk on the bridge I mean, they had a temporary sidewalk on the bridge when they were building the, the, the real bridge. They felt it was that important to have a sidewalk on that bridge that they built a temporary one. And now that we've got the beautiful bridge, still no sidewalk. So that's what I'm begging the council to do. Take that money and build a sidewalk and don't allow parking on the Pine Point Road. Think about putting parking on Depot Road in the cor around the curve you're still going to get the same amount of parking spaces and you wouldn't be bothering anybody if you allowed parking 12 or 15 parking spaces in when you first turn on Depot Road. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harrison. Anybody else? Not seeing any, um, I would turn it over to the manager for an overview and any well, I, I staff see, presentations. I see the town engineer here. Uh, I believe she provided a full presentation at your last meeting. Uh, mm -hmm. We're prepared to do it again if you would like that uh, for the council's benefit or for the public. So I guess I look to the council if you think that would be helpful. Uh, we were having technical difficulties, no. so I can. I, I was just going to give an over really quick overview sure. because I think um, Councilor Donovan did a good job with that pretty much already. Um, but I just wanted to clarify what's in front of council tonight is just prohibiting parking on that northeast side of Pine Point Road from Snow Canning down to East Grand Avenue. So it's, a, it's an amendment to the traffic <coughs> ordinance, Chapter 601. So, and 
Um, and like you said, mentioned in other meetings, the Transportation Committee has spent over a year um, looking at this and designing a complete streets design in preparation for that DOT uh, project coming and looking at that as an opportunity and a way to enhance this area. And, and it includes uh, the designated parking spaces. It's really an allocation of what they are now for a footprint in that right away and having a safe, adequate amount of space to provide on-street parking. And because of that, it limits it to one side of Pine Point Road. It also incorporates uh, bike lanes and resurfacing of that existing sidewalk and some traffic calming measures. And I can answer any questions as we go through that you'd like. Any technical questions for staff while Angela is with us? Not seeing any, uh, thank you very much. Um, and uh, to begin the discussion, is there a motion from the from the council? So moved. Second. And discussion, <laughs> comments, questions? Yes. Council Piazza. So I attended the first transportation meeting this week. Uh, it was Tuesday night, last night I believe it was. We're all melding together. Um, and um, was reiterated yet again that, that their support for this project. Um, I, I think it's. Uh, um, a, a good opportunity to utilize the investments that we're getting from DOT and, and uh, safety is being the foremost concern here. Um, I don't think it's uh, prudent for us to, to continue to allow the situation as it stands now. I don't think it's a, it's a safe issue um, and uh, transportation certainly supported that and, and uh, recommends moving forward. Mr. Donovan. Uh, just to recall the context, uh, uh, we had the clan bank arguing that no parking restrictions whatsoever should be made. Others uh, appearing uh, both before the ordinance committee and uh, before the transportation committee arguing for the elimination uh, uh, of all parking in that area. Uh, this is a compromise. Uh, I do support it. I also think that um, we should expect the planning department, the town engineer, and the transportation <coughs> uh, committee to be looking at roadway design issues beyond this. And I'm talking about from the bridge to uh, the point at which this project ends as to what's an intelligent way to treat with that space. Because that space is not affected whatsoever by what we're, uh, we have before us tonight. Um, so I will say I, I've heard, yeah, if we do, it, I think this is a very good compromise. Uh, if we do nothing, we're going to have way more parking than we should. Um, as has been pointed out, it's really extremely dangerous. Um, I would totally agree. I still don't understand, and I, I think we, something we should look at is why the pedestrian bridge was not part of that bridge project, um, and that would be something... Um, I would love to look at somewhere down the road. I don't, it's not a part of this, but uh, that's a very good point. And we do listen, because I know you want to pool, and I want to pool too, <laughs> and that's going to happen someday. Um, but I really support this project. I think it's been, the presentations have been well done, the information's been well done, and I have received some uh, anecdotal you know, pieces from people who think it's a pretty fair compromise. Yeah, so I, I did want to also kind of reiterate something that was brought up at the last session and in transportation as well. The reason that it doesn't continue all the way up to the bridge is because to um, um, Ms. Erickson's point, there is no sidewalk there um, and this project, the current DOT project is from this point forward. So it's not that we're ignoring that section. Um, it's something that certainly uh, can and probably should be addressed and will be addressed in the future. It's just this opportunity for this project right here kind of puts us in this scope of supply from where we're going now uh, all the way through to, uh, in essence, the road down there. Other council kind of comments? I did, just for the public, in case they didn't see, I did want to, there's only, it's actually one sentence that's being added. So just as a highlight, it's uh, item number three um, in the ordinance, chapter 601. It says, no parking shall be allowed on Pine Point Road from East Grand Avenue to Snow Canning Road except for within the delineated on-street parking spaces on the southwesterly side of the road. So that is the only change that's happening. Um, you know, I, I support this. I think that uh, Ms. Erickson's comments around the design 
um, will be taken into consideration now that staff understands what um, some additional needs are with that, that whole concept and how this is rolling out. Um, I, I know that they will be responsive, so I, I totally support this. I think that is uh, a great compromise. Um, any other comments, questions? Not seeing any, all in favor? And that is unanimous. Thank you. Um, under old business, order number, make sure I do this right. Yeah, order number 17-019 Act to approve the names posted to the various committees and boards as recommended by the Appointments Committee on February 15, 2017. Um, if I can refer this, I, be, I believe, to the Chair of the Appointments Committee, uh, Councilor Piazza. Uh, yeah, uh, this was uh, the announcements that were made at the last meeting, um, uh, the, the recommendations for appointments. This is just part of the process to formally accept them uh, and, and allow notification to go out that, that they have been uh, adjusted. Thank you. Any public comment? Anybody? Not seeing any, um, is there a motion from the floor? So moved. Second. Second. Um, any comments or questions? Not seeing any, all in favor? And that is unanimous, thank you. Moving on to new business, order number 17-020, act on the request to authorize the town manager to sign a memorandum of understanding with Manomet, hopefully I pronounced that right, for a grant for commercial scale soft shell clam farming. And I'd like to uh, first uh, turn this to Councillor um, Hayes for an overview as our um, liaison to shellfish. Yeah, I mean, this, this issue, I, and I, I'm totally in support of it, actually has come our way. It really is, you know, I think as, as people have listened to our conversations in the past about what is the health of our, of our clam flats and, and the, you know, the product that we have out there, We've talked a lot about, you know, there's, there's predators, there's other things. We're really trying to get a handle on what is the health of it. This is really, and, and one of the things we've talked a lot about is the unknown issue of what are the predators, what impact they're having. This is really a professor that's doing some work around trying to you know, protect the clam, clam flats and actually do some sort of lease agriculture where you, you take a section of the flats, you surround them by some mesh and other things that really protects them from the predators and then see where it is. This is something that has come our way and I noticed that David Green's in the audience and he, he, it's really his, it came his way and he's suggesting it and I think it makes a lot of sense. There's some grant money to do a three year study to set up some, some plots that we can monitor and follow for three years and see what impact, how, how the clam flats do in, in, under those controlled circumstances versus just the open flats. I really recommend it. I think it's a great thing that, you know, and when we were discussing licensing this year, one of the things that the council had asked for was really trying to get some better data about what's happening on our clam flats, what's the health of our clam flats, what, what are some of the factors that are influencing it. So I would really support doing this. Um, I think it's a great project. Um, we do it for three years, and at the end of the three years, the clams become our, you know, the, the, the resource for the town. So I. I fully support this, and I think there's probably others in the audience that technically probably could answer questions better than I, but that's, that's sort of the gist of it. So uh, thank you for the overview. Um, what I would like to do is open it to public comment. Is there anyone that would like to speak? If you can go to the podium. <coughs> Benjamin Howard. Uh, Seven Windsor Ponds. I'd just like to say I'm in completely in support of this after having sat through uh, the licensing agreements earlier this year. Um, I spent that entire uh, debate uh, trying to find some sort of leg of research and the week prior to, to stand on as I wasn't just going to get up and make some comments about an industry I had no idea about where uh, these people that make their livelihoods came in every every day speaking um, the best that they could to defend the side that they supported. Um, in that time and what research I found, there was very little. There was some research being done similarly in Freeport uh, where they set up these nets and they basically uh, were determining how the, um, the green crabs affect the populations of clams, um, um, of the clams just based off of, you know, even though the green crabs can't get in there, the clams have the ability to sense it. So I think this is a very valuable thing for the town to understand. I can't believe that we, you know, have waited so long to sort of find research and that we made a decision really without any research. I'm glad that it was compromised sort of to come to the middle, but 
Um, overall, I think this is a great thing. I just want to compliment the town on, on proceeding with this, so thank you. Thank you. <coughs> My name's Dave Green. I live at 135 Beach Ridge Road. I'm the chairman of the Shellfish Committee. Um, I would like you to know that the committee unanimously voted to uh, take this on as a conservation project, but it's also going to be a research project, an extension of Dr. Beale's work uh, with the Down East Institute of predation on the clams. So we're going to put in a known amount of clams, and we're going to give them three years, and we're going to go in there and, and dig them out and, and do measurements and weights and all that, and we will be able to see some of how bad the, the green crabs are on our sea, because one of the things uh, when Chris Wagner comes down, um, I'm going to be talking with him tomorrow, and we're going to be setting up a time to go look at his farm in uh, Georgetown, and we have all the support we could ever possibly want. This fell into our lap. It, it's an unbelievable project. Uh, they're going to give us $4,500 worth of clam seed and the netting, and they're going to come down and watch right over our shoulders and work with us to get 25 protected beds on approximately one acre of unusable flats. Okay, They don't want to come down here and take the best mud that we have to dig in. They want the worst stuff. They're trying to prove the point. If we can protect these seed from the predators, it, it's good digging, okay, even though it's not right now. So I, I truly believe this is the future uh, going. Can I ask a question? Sure. Is that okay? Yep. Um, Mr. Green, how will they, I'm curious, you said that um, the area is not obviously the best area to dig it. How, are we, how will you protect it? Because we haven't been able to protect any of the other areas from the worms. How will they keep that area safe? From the worms? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're not. Okay. I'm we're, just curious. I, yeah. I, I didn't know if that was part of what they were going to do. Unfortunately, it is not. He took okay. the first step was the green crabs. Yeah. Uh, and that obviously is the problem with the seed. Mm -hmm. the, the worms come into play on Once they're bigger, inch right. and a half, two inch, high, almost harvestable plants yeah. at that point. Uh, I was contacted. I, I have a lady I'll be talking with tomorrow uh, at the uh, shellfish uh, forum up in Rockland, and she is doing a study, first person that's ever contacted anybody, about milky ribbon worms. Uh, a, a true, she's going to do some data and see. So we're looking forward to having some help with our predators. This is a giant step here. Uh, at no expense to the town, other than we're going to put, you know, the harvesters will be putting in conservation time to make this work. It's nice to see the excitement. You know, uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm telling you. It's <laughs> been a rough year for your committee, and I just feel like this might be what it takes to yeah. bring everybody back to the table and have a real positive environment and something for you all to kind of connect, reconnect with. So I'm really excited for all of you. Yeah. Thank you. We're, we're happy. Good. I'm glad. Nice to be here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Ian Anderson, Marine Resource Officer. Uh, unanimous support so far. I'm happy to hear. I'm very much in favor of the project. Uh, again, it came up through our last conversation, the lack of data, and what data we could pull might have been from other towns, it's from other areas, hard to relate it to our town. It's an opportunity that I think would be a shame to pass up. In addition to all that, good stuff that's going on, we'll be, both the diggers and myself, will be hands-on with the project, learning the research method, the scientific method involved, and hopefully we'll allow us to continue that after our, after our research here. So, not much else to say that hasn't been said, but just that I'm very much in support of the project. Thank you very much.
Officer Anderson. We have an idea of where exactly this is going to be located? No, we haven't decided yet. They come down beforehand and do a number of site visits, and we get together as a committee and invite other diggers that are not in the committee as well to go on these site visits and really pick a place like Dave said that isn't optimal territory right now. Like he said, they really don't want the areas that are good to harvest now. They want to be able to prove that this protection is what matters. But it is going to be one acre of contiguous farm? Yes, that's the plan. Essentially 300 acres, give or take? Yes. Just to put it in context. I have a few follow-ups too, actually. Sorry. Are there still going to be other efforts to survey the flats? Yes, we will still have the traditional surveys that we were planning on already. On the main harvest area? On the main harvest area in addition to this research, which will provide us an extra level of data comparing one to the other. All right. And then the last question I had is going through the MOU. Sure. It says you have to designate a harvester and that that harvester basically gets the revenue from the commercial claims that are sold afterwards. How are you going to determine that? That's one issue that's being looked at through them. They have in the past only done it through one harvester. They're looking at doing it as the committee and the town as that designated harvester, so to speak. That's something that is new to them as well, and so we'll be working with DMR to figure that issue out. So maybe we could have claims at Summerfest. Just on that point, in my conversations with Manomac, as Ian just said, all other pre-existing relationships are with individual harvesters. They were very interested and excited to hear a town that was interested in sponsoring. So I think we'll see some slight language changes, recognizing kind of the different setup. But I think this approach is really far superior. As was mentioned, it's an opportunity for the commission to kind of rally around something that everyone seems interested in, sees value in, and it's really about scientific method and data. I agree. And we can accomplish those. And I'm very pleased it's a great opportunity for Ian to kind of rise up and into a leadership position. He's still relatively new at the town, but it's a great opportunity for him to step up. Excellent. Any other questions for staff? Thank you very much, officer. Pleasure of the council? So moved. Second. Any comments from council? Yes, ma'am. It just seems like it addresses that issue of data. And whenever you can use data to form decisions, you're often in a better place. So good. Anything else? Not seeing any. All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Order number 17-021, act on the request from the SEDCO, or Scarborough Economic Development Corporation's board, to move approval on the appointments of Alan Paul and James Hartley with terms to expire in 2020, and the reappointments of Dr. Gail Brazo and John Krasnick with terms to expire in 2020, and Rick Cheney with the term to expire in 2019. And is there any public comment? Not seeing any. Pleasure of the council. So moved. Second. Excellent. Comments from the board? Any comments? I would like to say, and I hope I didn't, Dr. Gail, I always pronounce that name wrong, but I do want to say thank you very much to everyone who serves on our boards, especially this board. There's a lot of activity that's going on, and it's nice to see Mr. Paul back. He used to be on our planning board for many years as well. So I really want to say thank you for those who stay on and reassign or sign back up, and the new people as well. Did you have your comment? Yeah, I just want to mention that this didn't come through appointments, only because SEDCO is kind of a quasi-town group, so it doesn't fall under the purview of appointments per se, but to certainly support them overseeing who they think is best qualified and would support it 100%. Any other comments? Not seeing any. All in favor? And that is unanimous. Order number 17-022, act to certify the election results of the special municipal election held on Tuesday, February 28, 2017. If the clerk would like to... Thank you. 
star, uh, Miriam C. Star, with 190 votes. We had a write in of Robert Foley for one, and two blank ballots. Mm -hmm. And pursuant to section 404 of the charter, she'll be sworn in tomorrow and then be able to serve as an active member on the board. Education department. <coughs> any public comment? Not seeing any. Is the pleasure of the board? So moved. Second. Comments? Mr. Chiazzo. Stellar turnout. <laughs> Absolutely stellar turnout. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to take that, really. Um, you know, I, I, uh, hopefully we, we get, uh, you know, maybe we just didn't do a good job of outreach or, or what, but um, I know it's always tough with only one candidate on the ballot, but um, 190 is, uh, somebody think did a quick calc, 0.001% or 0.01% of the vote. <coughs> All I can say is you, you get the government you deserve, and I'll leave it at that. Mr. Benavid. Uh, yeah, really, congratulations to Mary Stark. She's a fine person, and she'll do an excellent job. Any other comments? Um, I would like to uh, welcome her to the chaos. Hmm. Um, she's uh, <laughs> having served on the school board. Um, it, she's got a lot of work ahead of her, and she's going to enjoy it. She's a wonderful person, and so uh, congratulations to her. Any election won is an election won. Um, no matter what the turnout is. So uh, I do appreciate all the people that did come out and also for the staff that really manned uh, a very slow response. But uh, thank you to Tody's staff as well. Any other comments? Not seeing any, all in favor? And that was unanimous. Next item is order number 17-023, act on the annual seasonal road postings for weight restrictions if necessary from February 27th to May 15th. This was submitted by the Director of Public Works. I'd like to turn it over for an overview uh, just from Tom, to Tom. Annual rite of passage. Uh, the good news is spring's around the corner. I think you can all appreciate frost is coming out of the ground. Um, and so it's, uh, it's really high time that we do impose these, uh, these load restrictions. We do our best to work with uh, private industry. Um, oftentimes, if there's a cold overnight, they're able to transport in the early morning hours before the the back out of the ground. Um, but I think everyone that lives in Maine understands that this is a, a part of the process. So. Any public comment? Not seeing any. Uh, motion from the floor. So moved. Second. Second. Um, I, if I can start off, I did want to read, um, if this, this is the list, right? I did want to read for the record. Um, the roads that are, would be posted are Ashwamp Road, Dresser Road, Highland Avenue, Holmes Road, Jasper Street, Ross Road, Sawyer Road, Two Rod Road, Woodfield Drive, Chamberlain Road to the South Portland Line, Beach Ridge Speedway to the Saco Line, and Payne Road to Holmes Road. Um, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Um, any comments from Council? Again, it's just a rite of passage and spring is finally coming. Uh, no comment, then all in favor? And that's six. I'm sorry, so that's your name, it's seven. I can't count tonight. Um, next item is order number 17-024, act on the request to adopt the 2017 Town Council goals. And Tom is working on technology. Um, well, this is going to be, I hope, very quick, so I don't really, rather, or we have something to hand out. And if... Oh, it wasn't happening. Oh, okay. Uh, my big head in the way. Can you see it? Okay. All right, thank you. Um, so, um, just as a high level um, review for you, um, I can't see behind me, so I can't really. Oh, there we go. Um, Town Council every year goes through a goal setting process. Um, over the years, we've done different approaches. Last year's, last year's, sorry, I heard that, I wasn't sure. Um, last year's approach um, took us in a more formal direction in which we had a consultant come in that was called um, uh, Delphi Group. Um, they came in and facilitated our goal setting process in which we set out um, and identified three primary goals. You'll see, uh, for those who keep track, there are some consistencies with this year's goals that were set last year. Um, however, the process that we undertook this year was that we said as part of our maturing as a council and in our relationships as, um, as you know, the stewards for the town is that we decided to manage that process by ourselves this year 
and we held a workshop um, in which we sat down and went over last year's goals and assessed how we, um, what our outcomes were and if we were successful, which we were um, pretty successful. And then we began the process of identifying what will our new goals be and then what are the metrics that we want to use. And so what I'm presenting tonight is really the synthesization of those um, inputs that I received for each of you. Um, understanding that there's some, um, I tried to balance the editorializing and try to um, put this in using everyone's voice while I was typing and trying to include that. Um, the format is uh, fairly simple. Oh, when do I turn? So, <laughs> thanks. Um, <clears throat> um, in keeping with um, last year's strategy, I really kind of was able to take all of our pieces and synthesize this into three primary goals, or at least goal statements. Uh, those statements, two of them are a continuation from last year, and there is a new uh, item. Um, and really, while well, last year there were three, two of them dealt with communications, and this year we put them into one category while still looking at the two emphasis. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So our very first goal statement will be to continue to improve our communications. The second is to further enhance financial management practices. And the third is to focus efforts to improve the governance of the town council. Um, with that, in the next three slides are really um, the breakdown of each of those um, core uh, concepts um, in which we then, I try to write a descriptor around the outcome and actions um, using some generalities because we're all unique, we're all um, uh, verbal and um, sometimes verbose, so I was trying to narrow that down into a, um, you know, a statement. And then um, metrics, and a lot of everyone's goals are really metrics that we want to use to determine where we're successful in communicating. So um, in our very first one here, um, the, um, the core concept is to continue to improve internal and external communications. Again, that's the combination of two goals from last year. Um, by developing a town council communication plan that provides direction, policy, oversight, and business decision support for all communication efforts on the, of the town council. Um, this effort is um, specific to the town council because obviously the manager has a communication plan that we need to sync our plan up with and that will require um, some parallelization between the um, the staff and our town council communication plan that we come up with. And then in the last column are the success measures. Really the success measure is that we approve a communication plan or a Scarborough Town Council communication plan. There were several uh, recommendations about individualized metrics that can be included in that that need to be worked out. Um, we have formed, we've already begun this process. We have formed a communication committee, um, uh, a new standing committee that we are formalizing and it will be that responsibility through Councillor uh, St. Clair's leadership to develop that plan and to include the metrics that have been shared and we have the supporting documents. There were a lot of individualized metrics. So as an example um, that's not included here, um, there were recommendations that every town councillor meet with each other at least once quarterly. So from an enterprise or from a global perspective, um, that's not included in our statement, but that might be one that is brought up as a protocol within the communication plan that talks about how we engage and interact with each other. Um, so what I've provided here is a list of five kind of general categories within the plan that I hope um, brings um, a lot of that to, um, to light, um, although it might not necessarily be specific. So as an example, you know, we're going to detail the roles and responsibilities of that new committee. Um, we'll identify new strategies and resources while codifying current relationships, um, and that's relationships with other partners, including the school board. Um, explore opportunities for community engagement um, by increasing transparency, listening, and understanding. Facilitate improvements uh, to existing and new communication mediums, such as social media, websites. There was a lot of conversations about agendas and when they're published in annual report. I mean, I don't think people know, but actually our policies already state that every committee of the town is supposed to give an annual report in writing, but it's really not something that we've incorporated. So it's to look at those type of um, subtext and to bring that into compliance and determine if it goes forward or do we change it. And then guiding council leadership and council members in managing the inter-council relationships. So as an example, one of the things that we talked about um, meeting me when I was discussing being chair, there's a lot of conversation about the chair needs to um, communicate weekly or at least once before the next meeting to see if I can help. So there's different standards and expectations that we'd like to codify. Um, if you're 
you know, want to be chaired, then here are some of the guidelines that you'll have to follow uh, based on that. Um, the next core concept is enhancing financial management. This is a continuation of last year. The three outcomes that we were looking at was to increase communications on the budget process, manage the annual budget to a reasonable, sustainable level, improve data that's available using, sorry, I can't see it. I'm in color and I still can't see it. Improve data availability used to inform decision making. The metrics in each of those um, are a little bit more broad. So in increasing the communications, we want to develop and execute within the communication plan the standards on which we deliver our fiscal message every year. Um, we had talked about um, the one budget, one town approach, and that is kind of our clip for this year. And then also using expertise to workshop on how to understand municipal budgets was one of the other recommendations, bringing in an expert that can explain to us um, more detail within that budget. For managing the budget um, on a sustainable level, it was um, actually this is probably the only near unanimous measure that was very, very specific. Um, although there was varying degrees up to what has been chosen, um, but I did take, um, I was very specific, I took the majority, um, it was actually really six to one. Um, approve a townwide budget that keeps the tax rate increased to less than or around 3% using metrics that have, that have been approved by the council while including the following considerations. Review the needs for the expanded funding of the senior tax credit and review short and long term needs to improve cable television. Keep in mind there might be other things, these are just simply examples that were given to me as part of that task of writing this, but there might be other things to take into consideration that will go through finance. And I know Peter will uh, make sure that finance takes a look at that through his um, committee. And then the, da the data availability is really around benchmarking, quarterly trends, looking at the global uh, long-term impact of our decisions um, by taking a look at history and where it's going. So it's um, discussing uh, distribution of quarterly trend reports, contract to uh, update growth and services study that was incorporated many, many years ago. Um, and so the approval, really the measure that we, are, um, that we will measure against is that we approve standard metrics, dashboards, and benchmarks, and that we have a final working model by the end of this year uh, with the components that are in it. And then the last is uh, core concept number three, which is focusing efforts to improve the governance of the town council. There was a lot, a lot of input on this here. They, um, there are two outcomes. Uh, the first is to evaluate council boards and committee structures that support relevant changes for today's environment. And the second is to provide focus and attention on the next comprehensive plan. That again, actually that second piece was absolutely unanimous across the board. Um, in wanting to be successful in writing and drafting that new comprehensive plan. I'm not going to go through each of the four recommendations on the evaluation of the board. Some of them we've already begun, such as the Standing Committee for Communications. Um, there is, um, was a recommendation to create a new intercultural and diversity committee that we can look at. There's other rules and policies and things that we want to incorporate, including some strategic focus around collective bargaining, HR policies, and benefits. Um, and then the last piece on the comprehensive plan, I think that's um, pretty self-evident. Uh, we need to, by law, we need to actually call for a comprehensive plan committee to be formed and we begin that formal process and that we communicate the work that needs to be done as well as lay out the timeline for the approval and what we would like to do as part of that. So with that, um, I would like to uh, open it up to public comment. If anybody would like to comment on that that's here. No? Come on, it's so much fun. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. 54 Beach Road. Um, I find it very well done. It's very organized, uh, focused, and those are very good goals. Of course, the comprehensive plan, haven't we already started um, gathering people or anything? I thought there was a committee forming. I don't believe so. No? Well, our From a staffing because, perspective, Well, I because it has to get done by the end of the year, right? Kind of, sort of. I mean, yes, we're, sort of. We're, we're well underway. <laughs> Our intent is to use the long-range planning committee as kind of the pivot uh, uh, group, and they are charged, uh, the council's charged them with that task, but they intend to draw upon the expertise of all the other existing committees in the process. Thank you. Any other comments? Not seeing any, we'll close the public comment and the pleasure of the board. So moved. Second. Um, council comments, questions, amendments? Council Rowan. Uh, I, had, I had two comments. One, um, I guess I was a little concerned with having the um, 
the final passage by December of the comp plan uh, <coughs> goal. I'm not sure that we're setting ourselves up for success with that, with that timeline. Uh, and then my second um, comment is that um, in years past, we've done kind of a value statement where we have um, uh, kind of expressed maybe not overarching goals and outcomes, but some of the things that we care about and, and think are important. Um, and uh, I'd like an opportunity to, to amend and, and include um, some of those. I have a couple drafted as well. Um, that is uh, uh, promote and demonstrate civil discourse, promote the development of affordable housing, promote the preservation of historical buildings and objects, uh, promote the preservation of open spaces, and promote ac uh, protect access to beach and water. And I will accept that in the form of a motion to amend. Oh, it, um, that's okay. Does that mean that I have to read? No, you do not need to. Well, I would like to put that into the form. As long as uh, the town clerk. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I, I think so. What would happen is that it would actually become um, a, um, an additional. At the end, it will just be listed as a value statement. Is kind of how would, I would kind of think it through with being added to this. If that's okay. Um, is there a second? Second. Questions or comments on the amendment? Yes, ma'am. It was the same as what you said when you set your goals out, right? Yes, yeah, okay. I was reading my, yes. my okay. progress. Yeah, no, so we've seen it. It's not that we haven't seen it. We've seen it. Any other comments on the amendment? Yes, sir. Mr. Chiazza. So um, <clears throat> what's the purpose of the value statement? Is it to is it to measure performance? Is it just a general statement? Um, I it helps provide uh, clarity to town staff about the things which the uh, council cares about so that they're not spending time on things that we don't care about and they are spending time on the things that we, we do care about. So I, I don't believe that there's a measurable outcome uh, necessarily in each of those in each of those areas. But that's what I was saying. Yeah. Um, so then it, it kind of strikes me that um, I, I mean if we're going to enter those into the formal goal statement, mm -hmm. wouldn't we have kind of a discussion of group values to, you know, whether we would continue that process or were you suggesting we just adopt what you've what you listed? No, I, I think I was just throwing it out there as a, 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 something to throw focus pick in. Gotcha. Okay. So, so then what would the action be? Would we discuss those before we put them up there or would we, are you asking to include those in the, in the goal statement? I'm just curious to know where, what, what, the, uh, what, the, what, what you're looking for. I guess my thought was this discussion would be the, the, the outcome. But if we're adopting the goal tonight, I'd like to see these included, but I'm, I guess I'm willing to have conversations about you know, what you care about. I'm, I'm, I'm a flexible guy, so <laughs> I'm eager to please. But the effect of the motion would be to adopt them and make them part of the city. But if you want to change it, be my guess. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess my, my thing is I don't necessarily object to those values, of course, but I, I, I'd like to see some, some, some discussion like we had in the work groups, basically, of kind of batting some ideas around of, uh, you know, maybe keeping something as succinct, you know, to, to a few or, you know, something that we can, I'm not saying that those aren't the right ones and I don't necessarily disagree with those values, but something that we can kind of coalesce around and decide, yeah, we're 100 percent as seven individuals convinced that that's what we need for our value statement. Fair enough. I did bring that up. No, I know. I know. Oh, yeah. That's what Foley. Um, well, I, I love all those values, uh, <laughs> but, I, but I'm a little bit where in the same place where Chris is. I'm just not sure how it fits in in terms of adopting. And I felt like it, it would have been beneficial to that. So we never. Our workshop was intended to do more discussion around the goal piece, and we were spending so much time on last year <coughs> that we didn't always, we didn't get into the meat of being able to bat those values around uh, as Chris was suggesting. And that was really my only observation or feedback was just that I would hope that next year um, I would encourage us to, when we go back to look in the year in review and, and review these goals, do it with this council. Um, and then if there's change after elections that they can start that conversation differently going forward because there are counselors that didn't get to weigh in on how did we perform. Sure. So that's all. But I, so I'm flexible too. That didn't help at all. So um, maybe as a solution to the, if, I don't want to call it an impasse, but to, is to um, maybe suggest that we actually withdraw the amendment and then we can work on a value statement that we can, um, kind of like how we've done here, um, and bring that value statement back to the council separately. 
separately. Mm -hmm. Would that I think we'd all like to. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'd be okay with that. that. Yeah. So, um, if you'd like to withdraw, or if uh, Council St. Clair would second to the withdrawal, I believe she seconded it. Are you okay? Yep. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, I'm up to withdraw. Okay. As, as long as we bring it back. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. I'll make sure. Great. Thing. Absolutely. So back to the main motion on accepting the goals. Any comments around the goals? Council Donovan? Yeah, I think the chair did a really good job of organizing what is was hard to pull together. And so I find much of what's up there is easy to support. Great. Anything else? Right. Um, uh, can, can we have a discussion about the December deadline? Oh, I, sorry. Yes, process? actually, that's um, a good point. Because um, I did actually write a note. So I would ask the manager what he might recommend given past experience in uh, companies of training. Because you were here for the last one, right? No. No, but we, we've was actually uh, selected a consultant and have a pretty good idea. It's going to be well into next spring. It's going to be closer to this time next year, I think, before we're kind of fully wrapped up. Um, so the, the counselor's point's well taken. You're not likely to be able to accomplish that just by virtue of other forces, frankly. So um, I would recommend with that, I would actually recommend, um, I was just going to ask, um, I would actually move to amend um, the um, motion to eliminate and have final passage by December 2017. So the goal um, and metrics is to develop a formal plan for the town council to manage information of work to be completed. Well, it's an annual goal, so the date's already inclusive within the goal structure itself. Potentially a period here. Yeah, or I mean, or you could say by December, take out and have final passage. And just keep in mind, you're, it's it's a formal plan. Right. It's not the actual, it's well, a formal plan of the conference's plan. It's not I guess the actual. Again, concern the handwork to be completed. I, I feel like there's going to be work well. to carry Okay. So how about if we have just develop a formal plan for the town council to manage information by December 2017? Yeah. All right. That was in a form of a amended motion. Second. Conversation. I agree with that. Nothing else. Great. All in favor of the amendments? That's unanimous. Back to the main motion. Any other amendments or anything that you'd like to see changed? Not seeing any. All in favor? That's unanimous. I'm sorry, no. Well, <laughs> I was just going to say that's sorry. Right. I, I, didn't, my eye. I didn't vote the last time either. Um, could, can I apologize. We, yeah. That's okay. Can we can we recap exactly what where the what the change was? Sure. The changes um, in the um, second action or outcome mm -hmm. is to change the language uh, to develop a formal plan for town council to manage information by December 2017. We're just taking out work to do in town passage. Okay, fine. Squishy. I just said whatever. Okay. So, would you like me to? Um, so, Maybe all in favor of the amendment. Just make sure. I apologize for not um, my peripheral. All in favor of the amendment as it was read. Um, if we could revote. And that is unanimous. Now back to the main motion, um, as amended. Any other comments or questions on the total output? No. All in favor. And that is unanimous. Thank you. And the next item, non there are no non-action items. Uh, standing and special committee reports and liaison reports. Um, Councilor Donovan. Uh, planning board meeting uh, last week. Uh, the divine capital uh, uh, proposal. Uh, out on Payne Road was unanimously approved for preliminary approval. Uh, the enterprise project, commercial place, uh, was back on the agenda for the first time since October. Uh, uh, they were requesting clarification on the 60-40 ratio of commercial to residential and how that was to be interpreted. Uh, uh, the Divine Capital Project is ready to come back to us, uh, which is why we had a executive session today. Uh, the ordinance committee's meeting tomorrow, and we're going to be looking at the fireworks uh, 
ordinance amendments that are have we talked about at the last meeting and we're going to be looking at uh, a good neighbor ordinance concepts we have a noise ordinance we do not have an intrusive lighting ordinance which we're going to talk about and we do not have a derelict properties and of course we've had problems with some derelict properties so those two we're also going to be looking at uh, temporary signs, not signs that the building and planning department would approve, but these would be the kind of signs that you're going to hold a yard sale. You want to uh, support somebody for a candidacy and things of that nature. And we're, I've been working with Larissa Crockett, and she will be helping us unravel the Supreme Court decision that um, uh, caused us to need to evaluate this more closely. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Rowan. Uh, SEDCO met um, two weeks ago. Um, and uh, uh, the discussion was centered around the upcoming budget uh, and priorities for 2017. Um, there was uh, one item that was uh, uh, particularly discussed, Scott, and that was um, that uh, there was a, a sentiment um, that perhaps the money that, that, that inside the SEDCO budget around marketing um, might be a little bit low since it's uh, believed that that is the only uh, money that Scarborough is using to promote itself. Um, and so there, I believe that um, uh, further discussions were going to be made there and, uh, uh, with manager. Housing Alliance also met. Um, I think you heard the, uh, our, our statement. We also discussed goal setting. Um, or excuse me, we recapped our goal setting from the prior meeting. Um, one of the goals that we discussed was to um, update the Mayberry report, report which was um, uh, commissioned as part of the uh, most recent comprehensive plan uh, update back in 2005, um, and it was a, um, uh, a needs assessment for affordable housing in town, um, and um, the committee asked uh, uh, Tom to work with um, Dan to put together an RFP. Um, there is uh, some money in, in uh, uh, affordable housing reserves um, that is available and, and could be used for that purpose, um, but it would obviously come back to this body uh, with a recommendation to before any funds are spent. Uh, but the thought is that as part of the comprehensive plan um, updated, it would be nice to have an updated uh, need study for affordable housing so that uh, it can help inform that, that plan. Um, and then lastly, uh, there was a discussion around an attitudinal survey that was done as part of, again, part of the comprehensive plan last time, um, and um, that committee would like to be included. Uh, think that that's a good idea and would like to be included when that comprehensive attitudinal survey is put together. Thank you. Councilor Foley. Um, well, due to election day, we rescheduled rules and policy, uh, so we will meet next week. Uh, wanting to be mindful of our wonderful town clerk and all of her busy work. Um, communications met, but I'm going to let Councilor St. Clair speak to that. And both of my uh, liaison committees met while I was in Las Vegas, so <laughs> I'll catch up next month. <laughs> Thank you. Councilor St. Clair. Um, so communications met for the first time, and um, we actually covered a lot, like a lot, a lot. Too much, probably too much that any of you want me to get into tonight because um, I could go through all this. <laughs> um, but I think that the biggest things that we talked about, um, one thing I did was I met with um, Larissa before the meeting. Um, one, of the, one of the goals I had for that first meeting was we don't want to duplicate anything that um, staff is already doing because they're, the things that they're putting out to exter externally, they're doing very well. Um, the newsletter, the Facebook page, um, those types of things. So um, we met with her and she kind of did a great breakdown of who does what um, and we talked about how the council can contribute to the leader and um, uh, the newsletter. So we're going to kind of talk about some of that stuff. We're going to hopefully start doing, um, I just actually met with um, some of the people from the um, public cable. Um, we're going to start doing some PSAs. Um, for, um, that will be aired, hopefully, we're fingers crossed, maybe every other Friday. Um, and we're going to cut a wide range of, of topics, including like public safety, parking, summer, activities, special events. 
Um, we actually are going to go to some locations in town. Um, we will cover um, some of the historical areas in town, um, things like that. So we're going to get out in town and um, hopefully air those segments, which is kind of an exciting thing. And the great thing was the, um, the TV people were really excited about it, so that was kind of fun. Um, uh, we talked about um, partnering with any of the like local events. So any of the things that are going on in town, um, you know, like Winterfest, things like that, and always making sure that we have a council booth there um, that can have pamphlets for everything that we have going on in town and also um, quick surveys so that we hit some demographics that maybe we don't always hit all the time. Um, uh, staff. Oh, we talked about um, making sure that potentially either monthly or quarterly, we're picking a person, a volunteer, or a staff member of the, of the quarter and recognizing them for what they do. Um, we have so many volunteers that really give up a lot of their time and they're um, really the kind of the unsung heroes of this town. Um, I mean, there's so many volunteers that have been volunteering for a really long time and, and they, not that they want recognition, um, but I think some of them deserve a little bit of recognition. And so we talked a little bit about that. Um, we talked about meeting with SEDCO quarterly and just kind of checking in with them and making sure we know what's going on. Um, we talked about how there always should be, and this is something we've discussed in the past, but something that we really want to hit hard on. There should always, always, always be a council member at every opening um, of a business in this town. Um, if the chair can't be there, if the vice chair can't be there, there's seven of us. There's no reason why um, a council member cannot be one of us cannot be at every opening of every business in this town. There's just no, no excuse for that, in my opinion. Um, we talked about, um, we, uh, Sean was really instrumental in writing, um, you know, kind of what our, what our, uh, having a break ramp, what our charge is going to be. Um, we're going to review that at our next meeting, with, at, which is actually next week. Um, and we're going to send that to rules and policy for them to review, and then it will come to council for you all to take a look at. Um, oh, March 22nd at 6 p.m., the communications committee is actually going to hold a uh, community roundtable. Um, we're going to just do it once, try it once, um, and talk about some of the things that are going on in the community, and we'll see. We'll see if, it's, if it works out well for us. It might be something that we continue. If it's a total bust, it might be something that we don't. Um, but we're, the communications committee is excited about it. Um, obviously, any counselor is welcome to attend. Um, we have booked this space. It will be um, on TV. We've talked with Tody about that. Um, it is going to be a round table. We're just going to sit at the table with the residents and the citizens and um, no major expectations except um, that we just feel like sometimes, you know, getting up and speaking at a podium is hard for people um, and intimidating. And so we just want to create more of a relaxed environment for those people that might not want to do that. So, um, like I said, it's, we're just going to try it. Um, our goal is to meet the first Thursday of every month at 3 o'clock. That falls right before the ordinance meetings. Um, so that, number one, keeps us to an hour. And um, to allow, if anybody, obviously all our meetings are open to the public, anyone is welcome to join us, anybody that has feedback. Um, you know, this is a brand new committee, and we have a lot of topics to cover and a lot of things to discuss. Um, and this is a, a, a phased committee, so well, there's no way we're going to get to everything that we need to. I don't anticipate that this will be, um, we'll be able to tackle every single communication item that needs to be tackled externally and internally this year. So this is a, a phased project. That's something the chair and I have kind of discussed that there's just, it, it would be impossible for us to be able to do that. So, um, yeah. Um, so our next meeting is next Thursday. We're doing that because um, we had a scheduling conflict for this for tomorrow. Um, and then we switch to um, the first Thursday of every month. And that's it for me. Thank you. Oh, hey. Yeah, just a couple of quick updates. I actually, <clears throat> I think last week on vacation, I kind of, the seniors advisory board met on Tuesday the 21st. Um, and 
what we talked about actually they you know what they shared which is great they actually sent a, a thank you note to Martin's point for the community space that they're using they actually are there five days a week now they have selected activities every day um, it's working out really well Mondays they do bingo Tuesdays they do activity center Wednesdays is a senior lunch Thursdays they do a wellness series and Friday again is senior activity center so it's working out really well they've been very gracious um, and that was sort of an update for that. Um, both finance committee meetings, both the town council finance committee meeting and the joint committee school and board of education and town council. Um, we had some weather cancellations earlier in February, but um, tomorrow at 2 p.m. the joint committee is meeting uh, and then on Monday night at 6 the, the Scarborough Town Council finance committee is meeting. So those are just my updates for now. Thank you. Thank you. Council Chiazzo. Uh, so appointments met prior to this uh, main council meeting. Um, we had um, three applications for um, uh, different various committees. We decided to table those because of the, the new procedure that we're trying to implement on appointments of allowing the uh, chairs, notifying the chairs of each committee uh, before uh, we post the individuals to allow them uh, an opportunity for feedback. So um, we're, we're, we're um, tabling those three, if you will, for, for the next, till the next session. Um, that brings us to, out of 18 committees and appointments overseen by this committee, all are full with the following exceptions, uh, four, bit, four um, uh, committees. Uh, Board of Assessment Review uh, has opportunities for, for volunteers, Coastal Waters and Harbor uh, Advisory Commission, although we may be filling that uh, in the next cycle. Senior Advisory Board uh, has opportunities for, for volunteers and Shellfish Commission as well, um, but those will also be uh, approached at the next, at the, uh, next meeting as well. So um, we're also in the process of reviewing our um, uh, charge, if you will, uh, in terms of um, dealing with the, our one employee, which is the town manager. So we're having some discussions now about the review process and how we're going to possibly modify that and take that under the auspices of, the, of this committee and, and uh, certainly we'll have something prepared for uh, probably through rules and policies uh, or, or ordinance and it will come before the council too for full approval before we make any of those changes. But we're in the process of discussing what that purview would be and what that process would be. Uh, transportation met uh, Tuesday night. We had three, um, three major issues, the Gorm connector update that was discussed. Uh, basically reviewed the presentation again from the main traffic authority. Um, Route 1 Island CIP budget was reviewed and, and opportunities for improvements there. Um, so that was, that was taken up um, and, and <coughs> will we'll most likely um, come back in front of finance, I believe, as part of, this, as part of the CIP budget. And then finally, we, we did a review from MDOT of high crash locations in Scarborough. Um, that was a, an interesting uh, evaluation that, that we went through to um, it pretty much showed what we knew already, but PACS goes through that process in order to evaluate potential investments for road improvements or traffic improvements. So we, we narrowed it down to, to one or two projects that we're going to push through to PACS and hopefully we'll get some, some uh, uh, DOT funding or some, some, some grant funding to help uh, defray some of the costs of improving those intersections. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Excellent. I don't have any reports, so I'm going to turn it over to the manager for his report. Be very quick. Uh, we are in the midst of budget preparation. Uh, it's about a month away from pres uh, presenting it to the public and, and the council, certainly. Uh, this Friday is kind of the internal deadline for my senior staff to submit their department budgets. So work has been underway in earnest for a better part of a month at this point. Uh, things, uh, well, I'll, I'll reserve judgment. I haven't seen them all yet, but they're trickling in as we speak. Also very busy with recruitments. Uh, we're going through a uh, recruitment process for a community services director. I've done two rounds of interviews and actually have a third round set up. Very pleased with the caliber of the candidates. Uh, having a third round suggests that uh, I've got some, some good choices in front of me and I'm just trying to make sure that I'm vetting that uh, very thoroughly and <coughs> uh, staff in this one to make sure the fit is right. Uh, and assessing is something that's moving through the process. Uh, Chairman Baybine will be sitting with us and our hiring team uh, next week to actually do interviews. And we're still considering other options, including Cumberland County. And though it was reported in the paper, and I must have said it because it was in the paper, <laughs> uh, I have not uh, totally forgotten about a shared services option. Uh, 
but we really wanted to demonstrate, uh, you know, moving forward. And Matt Sturgis and I and other municipal colleagues will continue to have conversations to see where uh, some relationship may make sense. Uh, two other quick uh, notes of interest. Uh, the Eco Excellence Awards will be handed out uh, March 14th at Eco Maine. Uh, every town in the Eco Maine family, if you will, is able to nominate a, a resident or group uh, based on some activity. And we've actually uh, nominated Stu Axelrod this year. Stu, some of you may know, uh, among other things, but professionally he was the general manager for Pine Creek Waste. So it's somewhat in his, in his blood, if you will, but uh, more importantly um, than his professional pursuits, he's a longtime SEDCO volunteer. But he's also been a great partner. Uh, right now we're doing a pilot uh, project for organics, and Stu and his company are really, uh, have been very supportive and, and our key partner. And that's just the most recent example. So we thought uh, in his retirement year, it would be a great opportunity to recognize his contributions. And lastly, uh, the community dialogue will be held uh, through the Scarborough School System. This is the fourth annual. It's March 9th, 5 to 8, at the Wentworth Cafeteria. So I certainly <coughs> encourage anyone interested to come be part of that event. Thank, Thank you. you. Council Member Cummins, Council Chiasm. Uh Real brief, um, I did want to congratulate Mary on her success. Um, I was a little flippant before about the turnout, but it's always kind of a sore spot for me. I think, you know, it's an area where we can always improve on. But congratulations to Mary. I think uh, it's going to be a fantastic addition to the board. And um, I know she's been uh, actively participating uh, even before that. So I think she's ready to hit the ground running and looking forward to finally sitting at the table with her and, and, and getting some things accomplished this year. Thank you. Councilor Hayes. Yes, it's a little delayed, but I just wanted to kind of give a shout out to, to Mike Shaw and his team at the Scarborough Public Works. They kind of in February we had those back to back to back storms. So I'm sure those the, that crew didn't get a whole lot of sleep in, for a couple of days. So they did a great job and just a huge shout out and thank you for what they do do. <coughs> Councilor St. Clair. I'm good. Councilor Foley. Everything makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Rowan. How about and I have a, just a couple of items. First, I wanted to read um, um, a letter uh, into the record. The citizen asked me to read this. Um, and it is from Michael Turek. I, sorry for the record, I don't have his address, but um, he's spoken to us before to find that. But um, very late. There we go. Um, Michael wanted me to read, um, and this is a quote, uh, Public, Public Works deserves kudos and recognition after the last series of snowstorms that dumped a lot of snow on Scarborough in a week. Job well done, thanks to the entire team. So I wanted to do that for the record, if you don't mind. I um, wanted to also um, send out my thank you to Tim and Erica Downs, who previously served on the Shellfish Committee. They um, chose to uh, find other opportunities and have, um, um, are no longer participating on the Shellfish and Coastal Waters, but I did want to say thank you. Uh, Mr. Downs in particular has been a long-term clam digger and has served on that committee over time, many, many years. And so I want to say thank you to the two of them for having served. I um, want to say thank you very much for approving the goals. Um, it was like hurting cats at times, um, but I do want to say thank you uh, for the work because it was actually eye-opening and very rewarding, so I appreciate that. Um, and last, I wanted to send um, condolences and prayers and gratitude to the Andrews family. John Andrews passed away on February 20th. He was an inspiration catalyst and catalyst for the Eastern Trail and the Eastern Trail Alliance and our local here to the conservation community. Um, John had been on the Eastern Trail um, uh, family for, oh gosh, probably 30 years, 40 years. Um, the actual, um, the bridge that connects, I want to say South Portland to, mm -hmm. South Portland to Scarborough? It's in Saco. Saco, sorry, it's a, that's right, it's Saco Trail. Um, was named after him because of his contributions. And so um, just wanted to send our condolences to the family because he was a, he lived over in the Hillcrest community that's near the Eastern Trail of all places. So. I really wanted to say uh, condolences to the family. Um, and with that, um, thank you everyone for tonight's meeting. We do have one item. Um, it is to reconvene our executive session under order number 17-08, an act to request, um, or, sorry, uh, an executive session pursuant to Title I, MRSA 405.6.C, regarding economic development relating to the Eighth Amendment to Contract Zone 9 by the residents at Gateway Commons Divine Capital LLC. Um, we will convene for purposes of adjourning only at the end and I will make sure the town clerk knows 
had time for our record. Um, um, everyone in favor? Do you need a motion first? Um, sure. <laughs> well, we're reconvening a previous motion, so I don't know. We already made the motion originally, so now it's just a notification. So, thank you.